Hey guys, it's Janice. Welcome back to my channel. So if you're thinking about going digital, but you don't really know what's involved in it, or you don't know how to get started, what apps or programs to use, and what you'll need to bring to school, then this video will tell you all about how to get started with it, why it's great, and also some things that you might want to consider before diving into it. You're probably familiar with bringing multiple binders, textbooks, folders, and stationery to school, which some people like. But if you're planning to go digital slash paperless, you're probably going to want to use the following equipment. A tablet, such as an iPad, an Apple Pencil or stylus to write on it with, a MacBook as your computer, or alternatively a Microsoft Surface, an optional keyboard, and an optional wireless mouse. And that is actually pretty much what all digital note takers use. With that said, you will have to get used to typing reasonably fast, which is important for keeping up in lectures and also writing on a smoother, glassier surface may not give you the same satisfaction as writing on physical paper. But going digital does enhance your workflow because virtually everything is accessible from just these devices. And nowadays, lots of programs have syncing capabilities so that you can access the exact same document or digital notebook from another device and have all the changes that you made to it saved and synced. So now I'm going to talk a bit about some popular apps that myself and a lot of other students use for digital note taking. First off is OneNote. OneNote is a completely free program offered by Microsoft that has amazing syncing capabilities across multiple devices, including PC, Android, Mac, and iOS. The result is that all of your devices will be updated with the most recent changes that you make to your notes. There is a lot to play around with in OneNote, including the ability to insert audio, pictures, video clips, and printouts. You can also write or type depending on what devices you have. For me, I have both a MacBook and iPad, so I will use the Apple Pencil and iPad to supplement my notes with further information or just use it to highlight if I need to. They also have a great organization system where you can sort your notes by sections and pages. I will have a video later where I talk more about how to make effective digital notes in OneNote, so stay tuned for that. Next, Notability and GoodNotes are popular apps on the iPad, but you do have to pay for them in the App Store. Now, these are only available on Apple devices, so if you're using an iPad, you're probably going to go with one of these, if not OneNote. Typically, these apps are used for annotating PowerPoints or PDFs or making entirely handwritten notes and illustrations. Compared to OneNote, they do resemble the paper note-taking experience a lot more closely. You can type on these if you prefer, and typing would work better with a keyboard, but I've mostly seen them be used for written notes. I won't go into detail about how each app works, but I do have walkthrough videos on both Notability and GoodNotes, as well as a comparison between them on my channel if you want to check them out. I will link them in the description box. For now, I'm going to show you how digital note takers like myself integrate them for a smooth and flowy study experience. Probably the simplest way to do digital note taking is actually annotating PowerPoints or PDF files that have already been provided for you by your instructor. And typically, people like to import their PowerPoint files as PDFs into Notability or GoodNotes, bring that to class, and highlight and write notes in or next to the slides as the instructor is lecturing. This is very time efficient and it saves having to print out PowerPoints. Your notes at this point don't need to look nice as long as they are legible because you're probably going to rewrite them later when you're studying. However, I do encourage you to use abbreviations to speed up that note-taking process a little bit more. From here on, you can choose to upload or share your annotated lecture notes to your computer device via AirDrop, Google Drive, or whatever storage platform you choose. Then you would rewrite and reformat your notes on, for example, OneNote. Another option is to put your annotated lecture notes side by side with a note-taking app on the iPad and rewrite your notes from there if you simply want to handwrite and not type. However, this is somewhat limited to apps that support multi-note view, which would be Notability and not GoodNotes at the moment. Another alternative is you could pull up your annotated notes on Google Drive and put it side by side with your note-taking app. So this is an example of how I would use OneNote. I would type up everything that I learned myself and in class so that I have a comprehensive document of all the information regarding that topic. You may also choose to use your tablet to write these notes up so you can easily pull up whatever you annotated and bring it side by side on the iPad with a note-taking app and then easily refer to it while rewriting your notes. Whether you want to type it or write it is a decision that is completely up to you. Of course, after writing your notes on the iPad, you can still export it to your computer or Google Drive and that's what I love about digital note-taking. 
which is the transferability. This basically means that you can have tons of copies of the same thing, but it's still kind of all in one place on the iPad. For me, I've been using Google Drive to organize my school files for years and its functionality on both the computer and iPad is so great that I find it hard to abandon it for other platforms. However, I do occasionally use AirDrop as well. I'm going to talk a bit about the pros and cons of digital note taking. Firstly, it's time efficient, so you can produce more work in a shorter amount of time compared to handwriting. Secondly, it's compact, so you have all your work and documents in one place and you don't have to go to several places to find something. You also have freedom of customization, so you have endless customizations and colors that you can play with when taking notes. And also transferability, which refers to having all of your work synced across all devices and then being able to easily send that work back and forth. Lastly, a lot of things are online now. A lot of instructors will provide their PowerPoints through their school website, and I find that having digital note-taking devices just fits in nicely with that. As for the cons of digital note-taking, firstly, it can be very expensive, so getting an iPad, MacBook, all the note-taking apps, the Apple Pencil, and protective cases can all add up, so that's something to consider. You also do require an internet connection most of the time for your things to sync, and for you to access files online. And of course your devices might break or stop working and that can be very expensive too. Depending on your school policy, you might not be allowed to bring in an iPad or your own personal laptop. It requires you to type fast or write fast, especially in lectures. And you'll have to keep all your devices charged, which might be a nuisance for some people. Now that's not to say that digital note-taking is bad at all. I think that it's probably one of the best things that I started doing in my nursing degree. So I hope this was a nice introduction to digital note-taking for you guys. I will be releasing more videos subsequently about how to use each application for digital note-taking, so please stay tuned for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching!